Hello again, everybody. My name is Pixel Rain or Rain, whichever you prefer. And today we're going to be picking up our Voxel series. I know I said in the first video that I wanted this to be part of the first video, but I really didn't want to make a 45 minute long video and just, you know, overload everybody. So today what we're going to be working on is adding an actual data structure to our container or chunk as we're going to end up using it shortly and we'll get more than just our little lonely cube rendering on the screen here pretty soon so let's get into it we're going to start over here in our container and we're going to add a dictionary with a vector 3 as the key and voxel as the value i personally prefer to use dictionaries it means less iterating over empty data, even though you can early out of it, it also takes up less storage traditionally. Um, so if you have a 16 by 128 by 16 chunk, you're not allocating that much data. You're only allocating what's actually a solid object. And to get started, we're going to go ahead and add our dictionary and then initialize it during our initialize function. And then we're going to go ahead and come right down here and we're going to add a function called clear data. This isn't really going to be useful anytime soon. We're still setting up our boilerplate, but might as well have it here. And then the next part, the fun part, I personally don't like having to index in to my data by going data you know, new, new vector three, eight by eight by eight equals blah. Um, especially when we get into noise generation, which will be, I want to say probably the fourth part of the series. I've got the first couple planned out. So for right now, we're just going to take and make a public accessor for the container. So you'll do It'll have the value type of voxel and the index of vector3. And we just want to do a check if the data contains the index we're looking for. If it does, great, return it. If not, we'll return an empty voxel, which is just a static empty voxel with the ID set to zero. Then same thing, more or less for set. If we have the key, we just want to update it. And if we don't have the key in the dictionary, we'll go ahead and add it. This will probably change to a concurrent dictionary or more likely a serializable dictionary in the future for storage sake. So I know it's not great. It's not very efficient to have to check contains keys constantly, but we'll get past that here pretty soon. Now to make our block rendering method, you know, work on more than a single block we're going to just do a simple for each loop taking in a key value pair with the type vector 3 and voxel and then we're going to assign or actually we're going to do two checks here just to be safe if the value is id doesn't equal zero Actually, we'll do that the other way. If the value is zero, continue. We don't want to check it. If not, then we want to go ahead and assign our local block pause and block variables to be our key value pair. Don't need that anymore. And then what we're going to do is we'll still iterate over the faces, but we're actually going to add in a little bit of code here that does a nice check for us. If our block position plus a direction, which will be, you know, either front, back, left, right, up, down, and so on and so forth. Like so, this is matched to our faces down here. So we've got back, front, left, right, bottom, top. So if that block is not solid, or sorry, if that block is solid, we'll continue. We'll skip over that face. We don't need to draw it. And you see I've got that there. It's because we want to have a slightly 
cleaner way to check if return ID doesn't equal zero. We want to have an easier way to check than going ID equals equals zero or what have you. So we'll just add a little bool here. And then if the ID doesn't equal zero, which it would be solid, we want to return that. So that would return true. If the ID is zero, it would return false. Now that we've got that, we've got our face check in. So then it just continues on doing what it was doing before. Well, for each face that isn't blocked in, we'll draw the face. Um, this is probably going to be a little bit short of a video just because all it is doing is setting up our data structure, but that's fine. Some of these videos are probably going to be eight, nine minutes, and some of them are going to get to 30. But for right now, we're going to go back over to our world manager class. And we're going to come right here, right after we add it. Sorry. Uh, we're going to come right down here, right after we initialize our data, which happens during our initialize. And then we're going to make a for loop, technically three for loops. We're going to go, we're going to have a X starting at six and less than nine, Z starting at six, less than nine, and then a random Y height that we're just going to generate. Uh, and then we'll loop from zero to whatever our random Y height is. And we'll index into our container using that handy accessor we made. Accessor? Accessor? Whatever. Um, that we made where you can just index in by referencing container. And we'll set that to be a solid block. So with that done, come back over to your editor. Go ahead and hit replay. Everything moved. And you should now have a little cluster of blocks. So, uh, you know, it's definitely not noise, but it's something. And because random, I believe, uses your system time unless you set a seed, you should get some relatively random little results. You can also, by all means, make this bigger. You can make it 0 to 16 for X and Z. And then you can raise your Y height to 1 to 16 as well. And once this finishes doing its thing, you'll have a extremely noisy little piece of a voxel chunk. So that's pretty easy so far, right? Oh, you might be thinking that, oh, but that looks really plain, which, yeah, it does. But in the next video, we're going to make a simple vertex shader for this, add a little color into it, and then when we get to the following video of working on some actual noise generation, we'll start getting some uh, differences between our top blocks and bottom blocks. It won't be anything too fancy. I'm not particularly uh, good at working with noise myself, but we can get we can get some decent results pretty quick. So yeah, in the next video, we will work on adding some color to our random little voxel scene here. So I hope everybody had a good time with this video. I hope it was pretty easy to follow. Um, again, I wanted this to be part of the first video, so it's getting released at the same time, but future videos will actually be spaced out. I think my schedule will be somewhere around once a week, depending on popularity. So if you've got any other comments or suggestions on things I should do on the channel, feel free to let me know down in the comments. If you want to see me do more with this or you want to see me do something specific with generation, once we get to a acceptable point in the code where I can actually do that for you guys, I would love to. So feel free to let me know down in the comments and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. You know, starting out a new channel is hard. Thank you everybody for joining me. I will see you next time.